your higher self, your spirit part of you will always give you the right direction. The problem is, is that if we are emotional about something, our emotions, our personal emotions can take us away from that or we don't hear that or receive that clearly. So we are always receiving messages of guidance, always. But whether we hear them or not is a different thing. We have to remember that we have free will. So even if our guides will guide us in a certain direction or give us something to go on, we also can at that point choose whether we take that or not. Sometimes what is given to us isn't what we want to hear. You know, if someone comes and wants answers about a relationship, for instance, they might be within themselves, they might know that it's not the right relationship for them, but they want the person. So they go with the human want rather than the soul's need. And that's what takes us in the wrong direction. So first things first, I want to talk about your background and what got you into psychic mediumship. So as a child, um, I really knew that there were spirit people or that there was something else or other people that maybe weren't as visible as the physical um, and throughout my childhood that was something that really played its part within every aspect of my life not that I openly spoke about it at that point I might have mentioned bits here and there to my parents or my grandparents um, but other than that it really was it felt very personal it felt like it was just part of me and then as I grew up and, you know, had life experience, I realized that actually this is something else. This is something that maybe everybody doesn't see. Maybe everyone doesn't have the, the presence of spirit people. So I started to look into it. I started to develop myself through various teachers or books and just really find an understanding of what was taking place. And really, from the moment I acknowledged that I was a medium, because it did take time for me to actually say that I was a medium, because I had, like, for years and years, had watched mediums work, I'd been drawn to reading about mediums, it just seemed to really be involved in every aspect. So it took me time to actually say, I'm a medium. But when I acknowledged that, it really all just fell into place then, and then my work just started from there on in. Did it take a while for you to acknowledge that you were a medium because you were kind of scared of what that meant and how people would perceive you? Yes. I mean, I was never frightened of the spirit side of life, but I was frightened to kind of take the responsibility on because I had watched mediums over many years and kind of watched what to do and what not to do or what should be right and maybe what didn't feel right for me. I knew that it was a massive responsibility to step forward and say I was a medium because I knew then that people would come to me for help or people would come to me for knowledge. And I just wanted to make sure that I could do what I said that I could do. So for me, it was always a massive thing to take on for that reason. It was more about people in this world than the people in the other world. Yes. So how do you connect with the people on the other in the other world? Because I've listened to a couple of different psychic mediums and everybody kind of has a different method, all sort of similar. But some people have to write things down. Some people smell things. Some people see images. So how do you connect with the people on the other side? Like what did they show you so that you're able to connect with people in the physical realm? So mine's is really more of a feeling initially. When I open up to spirit, I can all, I can feel them tangibly stepping forward. And as soon as I feel that connection and feel that they are there, then the images will come in, visions will come in, sometimes noises, words, voices. I mean, it can be on all aspects and all elements of mediumship. So clear audience is obviously hearing, clear sentience is clear feeling and clear voice is seeing. And I use all three and most mediums do, but we all, like you say, have a different way to channel that information. So some mediums will write it down because that's just something that helps them channel the information. Whereas with my work, I 
seem to just be able to do it by blending with them, just by allowing them to step forward in a strong way and just sitting within that and just seeing what comes. And the spirit side know to use my vision, they know to use the third eye to let me see things or to let me hear them talk. Um, so it varies. It differs every single time I do it. That makes a lot of sense. I wonder, do you have boundaries with spirit? Because, you know, if you're walking among strangers or maybe you're at the grocery store, do they come to you trying to connect with their loved ones or do they or are you able to kind of sort of turn on and off that channel? Yeah, you can switch your awareness on and off. Um, I It's like saying if someone was watching TV and the kids were in the background, you know, arguing, then you would be aware of the kids kids but you would be watching the tv and focused on what was there the minute you switch your awareness to kids in the background then you can hear the tv in the background and the kids are the focus and it's the same kind of thing so i will switch my awareness to spirit and it's them i can feel or hear or see the most and then if i switch it back i'm in this world and i can see physically so it's a bit like that in day-to-day life when i'm not working if i walk in the supermarket or i'm out on the street or i'm at you know at the theater um if i switch my awareness to spirit at that point then yes i will absolutely feel the relatives of the people that surround me but it's unusual for me to do that because i'm not then in a working place so i would only really do my work if i was actively sitting down to do that work that doesn't mean that spirit haven't come in sometimes unexpectedly because that has happened numerous times over the years where you know, I remember sitting on a train traveling somewhere for work and the lady who was sitting across from me, I immediately felt her husband sit down beside us mm. and then he was giving me all this information and I I was saying to him from my mind, I can't pass this on because she hasn't asked for a reading. And then at that very moment, she, she leaned forward and said, where are you going and what are you doing? You know, are you going somewhere nice? And I said, I'm going to do some work. I'm a medium. And she said, oh, I love mediumship. And so then it opened the conversation and then it allowed me to kind of tell her what I was picking up and the information. And then she kind of got this mini reading, I suppose, on the train. And the husband was happy and she was happy. But that doesn't often happen because the spirit world know that unless there's a great need for it to happen in that moment, usually they know I'm not working at that present moment. Yeah. Do you have moments where you're working with clients and you're trying to connect with a loved one that isn't coming through? Now, I know mediums can't guarantee things. I can't guarantee anyone to any, you know, any client. But what I always say to people is it wouldn't make sense that they weren't there. Because your loved ones know that you're coming to see a medium, it wouldn't make sense that they weren't also here. The difference is that there's some that might connect really strongly, there's some that might not connect really strongly. And that could be to do with my mediumship, it could be to do with my energy that day, it could be to do with them and that the condition's not quite right for that blending to take place. So that's why I, I always say I can't guarantee it, but it would be very unusual for them not to be there, even if it was on a level that I said to someone, look, I've got your mum and and I'm giving you X, Y and Z as evidence that they are here, but I don't feel her strongly. I would rather that happened than say to someone they're not there because that puts fear with people. People then feel like, well, where is she? Why wouldn't she come? Is there something wrong? Or it might lead someone to think it doesn't exist. And I don't want to do either of those things. So I would always strive to get that connection. And 99.9% of the time that happens. So how can people tell the difference between a real psychic medium and someone who's being a phony? Because I think when you when you, people talk about psychic mediumship and why a lot of people are tend to be so skeptical is it seems that there are a lot of fake or phony psychic mediums out there, people pretending to be able to talk to people from the other side what are some signs that somebody isn't legitimate so the first thing that i would say is um if it's too general if the information that's coming could fit for anyone that walked in that room then it tells you that there is not a connection with spirit 
um, your loved one will bring forward very accurate evidence or something that's very detailed that only you would know. Now, that doesn't mean that every medium out there working that maybe is generic with their information it doesn't mean that they're fake, but it could be that some of them haven't developed the level they need to be at, or it could be that they actually do believe they're doing it. Um, and they're not setting out to kind of be a fraud for, for someone. Um, other times, unfortunately, there are people out there defrauding. There are people out there saying they're mediums and they're not. And that does so much damage for um, the, the people. But it also is hard for a genuine medium because we then have to pick the pieces up. So it could be something that they've been told that just does not make sense from spirit or something that was negative rather than positive. And then you have to then try and kind of piece it together for the person and show them that it's not true. So that can sometimes be a little bit more difficult. Um, I unfortunately don't feel that it will ever stop people being fakes or frauds or going out and saying they're doing something that they're not. And when the thing is, you're you're working with vulnerable people. You're looking, people are looking for something. They're looking for a connection. They're looking for evidence that the loved one is there. So when it's vulnerable people in that position that are maybe reaching out to grief or reaching out to needing guidance for their own lives, then they're going to latch on to whoever can give them that, and that's that's how frauds get away with what you know what they do, um, and that's a very unfortunate side. And you're right; it does make people skeptical. Then, so someone could go and see a medium, and it's terrible, and it's generic, and then they walk away knowing that person is a fraud. But what that then does is it puts in their mind that none of this is real. And that's difficult as well to deal with as a genuine medium. But I always put it back to spirit. I always know that spirit will bring the right people to me and they will bring the people that need to be with me in that moment. And that's why podcasts like this are amazing because it can kind of get the information out there to people that have maybe had a bad experience that maybe would think in their minds, I don't ever want to go to another medium. And then they hear something like this and it opens up their mind again. Yeah, I heard that if you go see someone who claims to be a psychic and they're fear mongering, saying, oh, there's a dark spirit around you. If you give me additional money, I can do a ritual to take it off of you. I heard that that's a huge sign as well that you know Absolutely. someone isn't legitimate mediums don't do that that's not our work that's not what happens and also i have to say that it doesn't happen there is not an attachment on anyone They're, the spirit people can't they don't want to come in and cause fear or alarm or harm to anyone here so if anyone is saying that or hearing that from someone then absolutely that's a warning to kind of stay away from that person yes so something else you talk about a lot is spirit guides. Could you please define what spirit guides are? And are they different from loved ones that passed? Are they angels? Yeah, I mean, spirit guides. So everyone has a spirit team, as I call it. Um, we have different guides at different points in our lives. And it's not just for people who are developing mediumship. Uh, it's for everyone. We all have guides and helpers in the spirit side, kind of taking us through different parts of our life. So it's, it's the same as being at, you know, a, a school when you're young, you would get a teacher that would be able to help you develop at that point in your life. And then, at, you know, the next stage of school, you would get a different teacher. So it's, it's similar to that. And these guides are um, guides that have been assigned to you from birth really, uh, from the minute you've come here, and they will guide you at different points. Your loved ones are more guardians. They are there because they love you, they walk with you, they want to share your life with you and see things in your life, but they are not there really to guide you as such. Um, so there is a difference in that. And I think mm. sometimes people get mixed up with that. Your guides have a higher wisdom. They some of them haven't even walked this earth. They've always been in the higher realms and they will come forward and guide your soul whilst it's in physical form. So it's a, it's a much deeper um, place for you to connect with rather than your mum or your dad or your cousin in the spirit side. That's interesting because I've heard that 
some people say that when your loved one crosses over, they could become, not always, they could also become part of your spirit guides. Um, so I like the, it's interesting, the distinction between spirit guides who are higher beings who guide you along your life, whereas your loved ones are more guardians. So my next yeah. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just going to say they're, they, they're part of your life. So if you're, if they were part of your life here, they want to be part of your life over there too. Right. So how do you know when you're communicating with someone with a loved one that's passed like when they're trying to send you signs or messages and also when a spirit guide is also trying to send you signs and messages how can you how can you pick that up so your guides giving you messages will usually be things that you feel within your soul mm -hmm. so let's say there was a situation in your life and you were asking for guidance about that within yourself you were asking god or you were asking someone could you give me guidance on this usually the answer will come it feels like it's come from your inner voice your soul usually that's from either the higher part of you which is also part of your guidance or from the higher ones in the spirit side so that would be your guide if it's signs from your loved one say you had a grandmother there in spirit who was trying to kind of guide you to whether you should buy that house that you looked at, then she will show you it differently. She will show you signs where maybe a piece of music would come on that you would associate with her, or maybe her picture would fall down, you know, or off from your desk or something like that. There's always a different way. It seems quite external if it's from a loved one in spirit, whereas from a higher place, it always comes from the inside, the inner voice. Okay, that, that makes a lot of sense. I tend to connect with my loved ones who pass. They come to me a lot in my dreams. So I see mm -hmm. them often in yeah. my dreams. I When it comes to my spirit guides, I definitely, they send me a lot of numbers. Yep. A lot of angel yep. numbers. Um, mm -hmm. And like you said, I, I get, it feels like a download. I'll just know something. And it's it's very neutral information. I'm not really tied to it. And I can just tell that that wasn't really me. That was like an answer um, or something being given to me from my, my spirit guides. So totally yeah, agree with. That makes complete sense. And I like the way that you, you worded that as well, that it's not something that you're tied to because really we have to remember that we have free will. So even if our guides will guide us in a certain direction or give us something to go on, we also can at that point choose whether we take that or not because the whole point of this physical existence is really to communicate with our higher self and remember that we are spirit but more often than not we don't do that we listen to what the human mind wants and we go in a different direction so you will find that sometimes you will say to yourself you know oh i knew i shouldn't have done that or that was the wrong move and i knew that and it's because we ignore that part of us has given us that guidance and we allow our human mind to take care of a situation. Um, and we always come back onto our path. So we never really lose the way of that, but sometimes we can go the long way around uh, at times as well. But that's part of what we're here to do. Right. So when you're channeling, how do you protect yourself from connecting with darker entities? And have you ever connected with darker entities whenever you're channeling? The answer to that for me is no. Um, and I really firmly believe that if you work within the light, you stay within the light. So it's never really been something I've looked to do or looked at doing. That doesn't mean that I haven't felt people in the spirit side who have had maybe darker pasts. But when they lived here, uh, when they, they, when they walked the earth, I, I felt that. I felt that some spirit that comes forward, maybe if they'd had a history of being abusive or, or more than that, then I can pick up the feelings of that. So that feels quite negative. But usually, well, all the time, I would say I work within the light. So I know that whatever I receive or whoever I receive, Will be of the light and it really I feel like it's as simple as that I think that sometimes it's human to want to look at both sides and you know of course there's opposites there's always light and dark um but I think that it's a choice um I know mediums who choose 
to investigate the data side of things. They want to do that. And sometimes, you know, I just feel that that's something that you could draw towards yourself. And I see no need to do that. I know that working in the light is what mediumship is, and that's what I stick to. Yeah, I agree. I think if I was a medium, I would definitely want to stay in the light um, and not, you know, get caught up with darker entities. So I hear you on that. Um, Since you've been a medium for the past 25 years, what are some of the most challenging parts of mediumship that you've had to deal with? Yeah, being a medium means that by its very nature, you're very sensitive. And in the in the physical side of life, being a sensitive is tough because really it means that everything impacts you. You feel everything from everyone. So if there's something that's even happening universally, you'll feel it on a yeah. deeper level. Or if there's something that happens within your own life, it's so emotional. Like you work from your emotional side. That's quite tough. Um, and... I always tell my students, you know, it is a, it's a double-edged sword because you can't have one without the other. You can't develop your mediumship without developing your sensitivity to things. So it changes relationships. It changes the way that you look at life. But on a positive side as well, it gives you that sense of being able to blend, link in with situations, receive your own guidance because you're aware of what that is. So it works in a negative and a positive way in that respect. Challenges as such would be more to do with, I feel, wanting to put the word out there, being brave enough to do that, because there are there's a lot of scepticism out there. And I always say there should be, because until you can prove something, then why should people just believe what you tell them? So there's always going to be that. But sometimes that can be challenging within itself. Um, again, my the way that I overcome that is just say well I can only do what I can do in the small amount of time I have here on the earth and as long as it's for the good of the people and the good of spirit then that's that's where I choose to be and whatever the results of that will be the results so it's just it's taking responsibility but it's also just saying I can only be of service and and that's it Um, I think that at times there's been tougher times there's been easier times there's been many times I suppose, over the years where I felt, you know, oh, this is really hard. Like this month has been really hard. The readings have been really hard. The the, the situations have been difficult to detach from because another challenge of mediumship is when the person leaves your office, if it's been a particularly traumatic passing for someone, you will still feel the aftermath of that. So sometimes Mm -hmm. difficult situations like that for me anyway, are so difficult to let go of. Um, that, that in the early days was a massive challenge for me. But even now, you know, if I say work with a family who have lost a child, for instance, um, through a traumatic circumstance, it takes me maybe a week, two weeks to be able to actually let go of the emotion of that because I felt it on such a deep level. Um, but it's part of mediumship and it's what I it's what I've been asked to do. And so I just do it to the best that I can. Yeah, I can only imagine. I'm a very empathetic person. I'm, I'm, I'm not able to connect with people who've passed on the other side, at least for other people. But to your point about picking up, you're being extremely sensitive is really, really tough when you're navigating the world um, on a collective level, on a personal level. So I totally hear that and being able to protect yourself from that. I've had moments where I've channeled people unintentionally um, and it's like all the emotions that I'm feeling from them, what their heart feels like, the heartbreak they're going through. And I know it's not mine, but I feel Mm -hmm. it so much. And it, I almost have to like, like go into like a state of meditation and breathe in order to release it. Cause I'm like, I know this isn't mine, but it feels so heavy. And that's why I shy away from, my gifts sometimes because I'm like it's overpowering so I can only imagine how you've had to kind of navigate through that through the years it it really is overpowering that's the right word um and I'm glad that you know to breathe and to get through that and to kind of pass that energy back or pass it away because you know you have to do that like if I've worked all week I and then I 
time in my own life, it's not fair for my family for me to walk about, you know, with things from that past week through other people. But at the same time, my family understand that I am such a feeling person and it is going to take time for me to get past that if there's been something that's particularly hard um, that day or that week. So it is, it's about the knowledge of that, I think, and it's about understanding what what you have to do and it might be like there's times where I've just said I'm just going for a long walk I just need to clear my you know clear the air clear the energy move forward from that reading um, and it really is just about learning to do that and managing that yes there's something else that you said that I resonated with as well is just having the courage and being brave enough to put this information out there like you said healthy skepticism is needed and all you can do is put the information out there and people will will do with it what they will i feel like we're lucky to be in a time where it seems like it's not too crazy to have these conversations there were they're reaching a wider audience and people are being more receptive to it and people are having a lot more conversations mm-hmm. about it so i can tell that there's a energetic collective shift to be more open to the spiritual side of life yeah i agree i think certainly for the last number of months i just feel that there's been probably a few years but certainly in the last number of months i've noticed where universally people are talking about it more um know that we'll all just come through the pandemic and everything else and I just feel that was a big energy shift for people it was a realization at points for people so there's been a lot going on that way and I just feel that people now more than ever are open to kind of hearing conversations about this talking about this um, which is amazing because really that's what you want to get the knowledge out there um And I think it can help so many people, you know, even if it's just a conversation, even if someone listened to this today and felt, you know, um, well, that kind of makes sense to me. But then the the process, the information as the weeks go on or the months go on, you don't know when that change takes place for someone. You don't know that. It could be that, you know, I've had people saying to me before, well, it's not really my thing or it's not what I believe. And then maybe six months later, to lose someone the spirit and then the conversation comes back round upon itself again where then they want to ask questions then they want to find out more so it's the same thing for conversations like this it might not resonate with one person today but it might resonate with them in three months time no one knows that but the biggest thing is that the information is out there and you know people like yourself and other you know mediums and other people that are in energy work um are brave enough to talk about it because it does make a difference to people's lives absolutely my question for you is since you've been a medium for the past 25 years what have you learned about life why we're here because that's one of the biggest questions that plagues humanity what is my purpose why am i alive what does this world mean where do where do we go after this you know so what have you learned um from the spirit about why we're all here and what the purpose of life is i think what i've learned is the purpose of life for everyone is different but as a collective um this physical world if you like or existence if you like is is just like a speck on the whole surface of things i mean and you hear people say you know life is short you know and and you don't realize how important it is until you're near the end of your life and you hear all of these sayings but rarely do we believe that until we are in that situation for ourselves but really from the spiritual aspect of things life here is very very short it's like nothing at all really in in comparison um and i just feel like we are all here to kind of learn our own purpose which could be like so mine here i feel is mediumship there could be some like what you do there could be someone that brings music into the world there could be someone that delivers babies into the world you know there's we all have our own divine purpose of doing good in this physical realm um but overall as a collective I just feel like it's about evolving the soul it's about going through experiences that will evolve our soul and our soul still then evolves once we get back home to spirit 
So it's not that we get back home to spirit and then we're, we just stay where we are. Uh, and people talk about reincarnation and things as well, which is a vast subject. But it's not like we get over there and then we sit there for some amount of time and then we can come back again. It's not as simple as that. There are worlds within worlds over there. There are different levels um, so that the highest realms, if you like, are the angelic realms where the highest of beings are. And we can progress towards those realms. So I think part of our physical existence is really learning about that and learning about the soul's voice and believing the fact that we are spirit in human form and if we can kind of adjust to that really rather than just being all you know human and living as not robots but you know doing everything in the human way then we learn more about that and that in turn evolves us too yeah I agree with that I think just from my own studying different philosophies and really diving deep into the subject and also from what I'm resonating with on a personal level and just kind of felt intuitively I do believe I kind of look at life and and earth like a school Um, and having that in mind doesn't mean that life isn't still challenging but I don't take everything that I'm experiencing so personal, especially with other people, I tend to think to myself, like, what am I supposed to be learning here? What is the purpose of this interaction? Mm -hmm. So you mentioned reincarnation. Is reincarnation a thing? Reincarnation is a thing, but not, I feel, as what people think it is. Mm. So if we can think of the spirit as that central part of us um, and our spirit emanates light, different light. So at this moment in time, I'm spirit in human form as Karen. My incarnation here is Karen. Now, when I go home and Karen passes to spirit, when the physical body dies and I go home to the spirit side I will go back to spirit but maybe another emanation from my spirit will then incarnate here but it won't be Karen so it's almost like if you could think of the facets of a diamond and each part of the diamond needs polished each part of the diamond needs to be perfected in some way it's a bit like that so it's from the same spirit that I am part of or that I am but it's a different incarnation of you know some people talk about you know i you know my grandson has been here before i'm sure he's been here before or some people talk about past lives i was here and i was you know x y and z it's true in some part but it can't be true in every part because you have never incarnated as you before so it, that's why i said it's a vast subject it's a huge subject to talk about for hours, but it does exist in in ways yes Mm, I have to dive deeper into that because what it sounds like is if your spirit is in, you know, those rooms that have like multiple mirrors with different images, it sounds like those different reflections have their own specific reincarnation, but your spirit is so vast that it could be in multiple places at the same time and the spirit world incarnated and we can't, I mean, obviously we can't wrap our minds around what that could possibly mean. So that's very yeah, you're, interesting. You're, yeah, you're so right. And I think that's the thing. Our mind is very limited. I mean, we, we, we can't access parts of the mind as it is. And we are so limited in a way too. We are limited in our belief that we are as powerful as we are. You know, we cannot get our heads around that. And, you know, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing in some aspects because we're here to have a human experience. So you don't want to be living in this place of always being within the spiritual side of, of yourself. You want mm. to live a physical life and a human life. That's what we're here to do. So I think it's about getting the balance right, but maybe gaining the information or understanding at the same time. Yes. I think, you know, being human at this time, we have to make sure that we have the human experience because for me as well sometimes when I get too much into the metaphysics of things I'm like all right enough get up go hang out with your friends go to a party be a human being um so yeah it's definitely a balance but 
I, I definitely just feel like we can't ignore the fact that we're spirit spirit beings having a human experience. I think definitely. that would... I think also what you said is completely right about, you know, going to a party, just reminding yourself, go and enjoy yourself with your friends or whatever it might be. Um, Because I know for myself, with with my mediumship and spirituality, that I've often preferred that side of things. I've often, you know, stayed in that aspect of things and read books and wrote journals and done all the spiritual aspects of things. Because sometimes it's a safer place to be. For me, that's how it yeah. feels. It's almost that feeling of that's me. And I know that's me because of the work that I do and how I connect. So sometimes it's actually harder for me to pull myself back to the here and now and say, no, I'm in the here and now and I have to enjoy that because this is only a tiny amount of, of my my time. Um, so, yeah, if you are a spiritual person, for anyone who's listening to this, if you are a spiritual person, Sometimes it is hard to remind yourself to be human sometimes. Yes, it is. There's something else that you mentioned about everybody has their individual purpose. And obviously we also like we also mentioned early in the conversation that we have guides that try to make help us through life to make the right decisions that are for us. But does everybody have a specific destiny? Have you gotten an answer to that have you ever asked that do we have a specific destiny or because we have free will we our destinies continuously evolving and changing so i have asked that question i have like sat and meditated on that and where i feel the answer comes is more of yes i think certain things are predestined for us so it might be that people that are supposed to come into your life will come into your life at certain points. Um, It might be that what you're supposed to do with your life, uh, career-wise or, you know, family-wise, that can be predestined as well. So that's always kind of when you hear somebody say that's written in the stars already, you know, that's already there. But the free will is what leads us to those places. So it could be that I, you know, if I said to someone, well, in 2024, this, event is going to happen you're going to find your team job let's say that comes up and then that person goes away and for all of this year doesn't do anything about furthering themselves to be towards that dream job then they're not going to find that that timeline works for them that doesn't mean they won't get there in the end but it just means that they are kind of veering off path because they are not listening to what they need to further themselves in that direction so there is a predest destined kind of um, map if you like but the free will can take us from that you know or it takes longer to get there somehow that's supposed to happen I I think people get you know really perplexed within themselves oh I've wasted my time you know I was in the wrong relationship for six months and if I hadn't had that relationship I might have met the person that I'm supposed to be with that doesn't work either because in order for your soul to grow, in order for you to be ready to receive that relationship to move forward, you needed the other relationship to kind of compare where you are with things. So no one should panic about coming off their path or feeling that they took longer to get to where they were supposed to be. It's just something that happens. Yes. You mentioned timelines, and I want to ask a quick question on that. So I hear sometimes that people will say, well, in this timeline, my loved one has passed, but in a different timeline or a parallel universe, you might say they're still alive, right? So you're essentially, it's this whole notion of we are constantly splitting into different parallel timelines based on certain decisions that we've made. Is is that something that you've picked up through your Uh, mediumship? I mean, not through my mediumship as such, because when I'm working through my mediumship, it's more about connecting things that have actually happened. So connecting someone with their loved one. Within my understanding of the spiritual universe, if you like, then there are many different things that you can look at that are quite fragmented, like quantum physics and, you know, different timelines and things. But I think sometimes, unless you're going to be 
you know, a, a professor of that, or unless you are going to teach that, or you don't need to Go push to that deep. too much, mm -hmm. because I think then what can happen is it can then take you away from a very simple side to things and it's not that you're ignoring that like we all like as a medium I know that these things exist and I know that there's many different ways but because we don't have the proof of all of those things and it can be difficult because then your mind is in turmoil all the time yes so yeah. I would say it's easier to um, get the evidence of things that you know and when I sit with because I know how to communicate with my guides my helpers I can ask questions and receive it you know um, knowledge and know that okay that's that feels right for me I can go forward and teach that or talk to people about that but vaster subjects like even parts of reincarnation or the the side that you just talked about different timelines I think is a whole other whole other thing yes yes and, and, and you have to be careful about getting into a rabbit hole of that because it makes it hard to live the life that you have yes at the moment exactly. i do know that sometimes when i am trying to get an answer from god you know my spirit guides and stuff some of the feedback that i get is well you know this decision that you're trying to make isn't necessarily wrong but it might not put you on the highest timeline which to me when i get those messages sometimes I'm like what does that actually mean but like you said I kind of have to not take it with a grain of salt but just kind of again ground myself back into earth and this current life this, and yeah. try not to overthink or overcomplicate decisions that I'm that I need to make <clears throat> or going through life in general yeah, I think that the biggest thing that you can remember when that happens is that your higher self, your spirit part of you, will always give you the right direction. The problem is, is that if we are emotional about something, our emotions, our personal emotions can take us away from that or we don't hear that or receive that clearly. So we are always receiving messages of guidance, always, but whether we hear them or not is a different thing yes. and if we can listen so if we can tune into that inner voice and listen to what's been given to us then we will always be in the right place because it's like i call it like a, an inner sat nav you know it's never going to take you in the wrong direction but it's whether we can listen and sometimes what is given to us isn't what we want to hear you know, if someone comes and wants answers about a relationship, for instance, they might be within themselves. They might know that it's not the right relationship for them, but they want the person. So they go with the human want rather than the soul's need. And that's what takes us in the wrong direction. And um, so there's like I say, there's no right or wrong. It yeah. will be what it's going to be. But you have to be aware that you are always in receipt of the correct guidance. This has been a great conversation, super insightful. I always get so excited having these conversations because I'm a nerd about all of this stuff. So thank you so much for your insight. So I always ask all of my guests for final words of wisdom to the listeners. It could be about everything we've been talking about or something completely different that you keep in your back pocket as you go through life. One thing, well, there's two things that I always remember as I go through life. The first thing is a, a saying that my grandmother used to tell me all the time and she used to say, this too shall pass. Mm -hmm. And I have used that more often than I can even say um, for myself and for other people. It's something that I use because it's such a powerful statement because everything is temporary. Everything, yes. every situation, this life, everything is temporary. And as a medium, I completely understand that. But sometimes within the physical life, there's emotional things that go on, you know, hard situations for people. And I always say this too shall pass. And it's something that almost I say to myself as a ritual, really, because it, it's, it moves me from one part to the next. You know, if you're having a particularly hard day or whatever might be happening at that point. The other thing that I would mention also is to say to people, remember that you are spirit. Remember that you are powerful beyond all measure. There's no, there's nothing that you can't do or change or, you know, transition through in this life. 
because we are so powerful. And I think if we remember that and pair that up with that everything is temporary, it kind of adds to your power. It empowers you to walk forward in your life um, with whatever you're facing, really. Uh, and that we are all connected. We're all connected. We are all the same. There's no one any different. There's no one higher or lower. Um, our lives might be different physically, but we are all connected and we all go home to the same place. Yes, that's good. I, I love that this too shall pass is definitely one of the things I keep in my back pocket as well. Thank you, Karen, again for being on the show. It was amazing having you here. Where can people find you? They can find me at karenpsychic.com. Perfect. Thank you.